The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hey team, Ben Nash here. I'm one of the co-founders at XY Advisor and founder of the rapidly growing Pivot Wealth, which is my business baby. I started from scratch about eight years ago and I've since scaled up to become one of Australia's better known financial advice companies for high income accumulators. You can join me every Tuesday as I have the pleasure of furthering my own knowledge by interviewing some of the best people in our industry and beyond to improve every part of what we do with our advice process. We're currently hiring financial advisors and associates, so if our approach resonates, you can learn more at pivotwealth.com.au forward slash careers. This podcast is brought to you by MetLife 360 Health. MetLife has partnered with Teladoc to provide 360 Health virtual care, which gives your clients access to more than 50,000 local and global medical specialists through the convenience of the 360 Health virtual care app. And best of all, it's at no extra cost as part of their MetLife Protect policy. 360 Health helps to defend against serious illnesses so you can live healthier for longer. MetLife, inspired by you. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor team and today I'm pumped to be here with Gianna Thompson. Gianna's an advisor based down in uh, the the lovely uh, Australian Capital Territory. Mm-hmm. Um, at under Fitzpatrick's private wealth. Thankfully uh, for us, Gianna's joining us from the depths of her maternity leave with uh, with tiny little six week bub at home. So, uh, Gianna, really thanks for joining us and appreciate you taking the time. No worries, uh, Ben. It's uh, thanks for uh, having me on the show. Look, I uh, know through my wife that it, it can go a little stir crazy just uh, talking to babies all day. So, hopefully, we can give you an outlet for, for some of that talking. That's um, <laughs> Yeah, I thought it may be a good place to start with. Could you just talk us through your your advice journey and how you've ended up where you are today? Yeah, sure. Um, so started off in financial services, um, A&P Bank in 2001. Um, then I moved into superannuation um, in 2003. Um, and then I um, uh, had a bit of a... Um, this, it took a VR, I suppose, about 10 or so years ago. And my dad's financial planner through AMP saw my resume. He already had the diploma of financial services and all this kind of stuff. And he kind of handed my resume around. And that's how I landed in my first financial planning role um, with an AMP firm. And kind of, or, or actually, yeah, started off as a power planner for a few months. And then they put me straight away in a financial planning role. And then took off from there and um, now I run my own business, been doing so uh, for about three years under Fitzpatrick's private work. So, um, yeah, it's one no, I'm... happy but busy journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Starting your own business coinciding with starting a family as well. What was the what was the catalyst to to sort of, you know, take that leap and, and start your own gig? Uh, I think... Well, my whole family are business owners. You know, my you know, I grew up in my dad is a business owner and investor, my whole family is, and I kind of knew that, you know, to create the lifestyle that I want and, you know, stuff, um, running a business was probably the way to go. I also was, I'm very I'm big in helping people work out their ideal life and their goals and so forth, and I was when I was in a in one of Australia's largest super funds, I was very product sort of driven based, and that's mm. you know I really want to just take a step take a step back and focus on more goals based advice, and especially like money money mindset and money cash flow management and stuff as well. Um, yeah, so I thought you know what, instead of people telling me what to do, I might as well just start my own business and do the way things do things the way I want to do it. So um, yeah, I love it. It's it's um, it's, I had no idea how crazy it would be. Um, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't have started, to be honest. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Yeah, I'm just glad I did. Yeah, it's funny that you go, oh, yeah, I'll start a business and, um, you know, give myself freedom and I know I do the same thing. I can just travel yeah. the world and, you know, I'll take 10 weeks holiday a year and that's going to be awesome. 
<laughs> and then you get in and it's, uh, it's a few extra things that you maybe haven't quite considered that uh, need to get done and with nobody else around you, you're the one to, to do them. Yeah. How you, So you mentioned you're a, a bit over three years. You also told me just offline when we were chatting that you your uh, eldest bub is, is around three as well. How yeah. have you found that? balance and starting a business you know with having little one and now you with a um you know with a six week old as well your business uh just yeah. a background for people listening in you're you're the sole financial advisor you've got a cso focus on efficiency and you know wanting to have good relationships but with smaller numbers of, of clients but yeah how how have you made that work for you yeah, well, um, my first one was born less than a year after I started my business. And yeah, looking back, um, I worked like crazy. I took work to the hospital. I didn't take a break, but you know, I had to do it. Um, you know, I didn't have the cash flow and I was still client building up my client base. Second time round, I've been, t- you know, I've been, um, uh, a bit more proactive in bringing forward any reviews and planning to take some time off to be a bit more focused and present with family, which I find is, you know, very important. So a lot of planning, um, you know, outsourcing, delegation, you know, Madeline, I've got an amazing staff member, Madeline. Um, she's, yeah, um, all my clients know her, so that's been a breather um, as well. But, uh, yeah, hard work. I've had a, you know, from day dot, I had a money coach, uh, sorry, a, um, a business coach as well. So Terry Reid, um, you know, having my own coach as well through this whole process has really helped me stay focused and build the, the lifestyle and the business that I want to create for not just myself but my clients, my family as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I found for me that it forces you to delegate and, you know, get a few things nailed so you can create that freedom. So in some ways it's good because other – you know, you might otherwise be just keep the stuff on your list for for longer, and you realise that it is possible. Often surprising, that gives you a bit of motivation to keep going down that path. Yeah. How yeah. do you, how do you manage it though? Just generally, with you know, you got two kids, essentially like three and under, um, and then finding a finding a balance, not like outside of the the mat leave piece that you're doing at the moment, but just mm-hmm. like how do you make sure clients are looked after, business is looked after, families looked after. How does that yeah. work for you? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I do have an amazing husband. We do work as a team. <laughs> this is, um, you know, he he works from home a lot too, so we, we kind of communicate quite well. Um, I work, for, I still work full time um, when I'm not mat leave, but I only see clients three days a week, and then the other two days are working, you know, all the, you know, the fully multiple formats and stuff like that that we've got business to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm picky with clients I bring on now. I don't bring on anyone and everyone. So I do focus on more the, um, you know, more high paying clients, providing them more personalised service instead of very, you know, low cost of product stuff. Um, I've kind of steered away from that now. Um, yeah, it's, and again, just, you know, outsourcing, you know, I've got, um, you know, outsourced power planning. I don't write my own SLKs anymore. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um took a while to get here um mm. but and i'm still working on it but um like you know i've managed to take i'm taking three months off at the moment and i can actually breathe and you know know that you know everything's financially well organized my business is financially well organized my clients know exactly what's going on they're all happy um yeah it's pretty of a pretty of a sweet spot it's very hard <laughs> for us business owners to take time out um uh, and I'm not completely switched off. I am st- tinker- tinkering and keeping things afloat. But yeah. Nothing, no crazy, you know, 10 meeting a week, you know, stuff um, going on. So That's great. Well done. Um, how you, you mentioned outsourcing for power planning, and obviously there's a lot of different ways to do that. We talk some people offshoring, outsourcing, you know, you know insourcing. Um, what sort of led you down that path and what have been some of the learnings on the, on the journey? Yeah, so I mean, I used to be a power planner, and when I first started, I did write my own SOAs and realized it's a lot of, you know, that's taking time away from me going out and meeting new clients, and so forth. So, uh, Fitz used to have an internal power planning team, which I did use uh, religiously, and then they closed it down uh, beginning of the year. Uh, and so, I found a, a power planner up in Brisbane, Steve, who's he's awesome. Um, uh, and I've just signed up with DBA as well to outsource to them. Yeah, I think it's easier than 
hiring people within the business. Um, you know, a lot of cost to do that. Um, and I hate managing staff, to be honest. I mean, I've got one staff member, but that's enough. So outsourcing to me um, is pretty sweet. And I'm just about to open up a very professional family home office as well. So I'm moving away from my um, corporate office in Kingston here in the home office. But I've only got limited capacity of how many staff I can have here. So that was another yeah. reason for doing it as well. Nice. And what would you say for anyone that's that's going down or, or in the, the outsourced power planning path? What's the most important thing that you think they should focus on to get that right? Um, I think it's I'm very big on compliance. So being power planners, being aware of our only licensee compliance um, mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so them being open to understand what those compliance requirements are and if possible there's a communication between the compliance team so dba do have a communication line open um because you know our bits have um established that uh with with, yep. with steve you know he was his personality type he's very open to learning and feedback and stuff as well so it did take us a while to get to the point where i was happy where i wasn't adjusting soas so much and mm -hmm. um and yeah so a bit of patience um you know steve is in is in, is, is in australia um if i was doing it per, like on my own i don't feel comfortable going overseas but i do know dba is a bit of um overseas in australia so mm -hmm. um, it's, it sounds like it's a lot of the same qualities that you look for in someone that you'd have in your own team doing it as well, that openness to learning, you know, feedback communication. Yeah. So I think I know, and I've done it before, we used to outsource all of our power planning. Those guys were good. I've tried a couple of times and failed with other providers as well and just not mm -hmm. having that. Um, it's not like this silver bullet that you can just go, okay, great, I need this plan and there it yeah. is. And it just expect people to know, sort of get out with what you what you put in, or at least that was my experience. You need to be patient and um, understand it just takes time for it to all work out, I suppose. Um, yeah. Gianna, one of the things that you mentioned there was talking to people about life goals and money mindset and, and those sorts of things. How, how do you introduce that into your relationship with clients and planning process? Yeah, so um, a key reason why I joined Fitzpatrick's as my licensee is because of the lead advisor training. Um, and, you know, part of that lead advisor training is I go through this 10-3-now you know, process or live the legacy sort of thing. Um, yep. So, you know, before I bring clients on board, we meet for a 90-minute discovery session and we use a whiteboard and we visually map out, you know, where they're thinking financially right now and we go through this live, love, learn, legacy theme. So where do you want to be living? What type of lifestyle are they living? What would they love to be doing? Anything they would like to learn or education for the kids and then their legacy piece. Um, and those, you know, big ticket items will have financial implications and then we kind of work backwards to what we need to do over the next um, 12 months or so to really get the ball rolling. Um, and, and every single client goes through that in the initial process before we, um, before we decide to engage each other. Mm -hmm. So that initial meeting, you know, don't talk, you know, about products. I don't, you know, I obviously don't provide financial advice. It's all about, right, well, what would you like to help me? What would you like me to help you achieve? Um, and why, I suppose, that the big context of the piece. Um, Makes a lot of sense. I find that people, have, it's, sometimes we get really excited talking about our numbers and strategies and those sorts of mm -hmm. things, but they're really, uh, it's not the same emotional connection that you have when you do, and I've seen and gone through that process myself before as mm -hmm. well, that, you know, what is it, your legacy and these deeper questions that create a real emotional response in clients, help you build a relationship with them, but uh, mm -hmm. get them pumped up about the things they want to do before you start talking tactics. Yeah, okay, you, you come to me because you want to retire in three years. Well, what would you like to do? You know, would you like to still live in Canberra? Would you, um, do you have grandkids that you want to, you know, see a bit more regularly, a bit more travel? You know, why, you know, why and why do you want to retire? You know, are you stressed at work? Is there something else going on in the background? Um, it's very fulfilling as well, you know, understanding their purpose and their wants. Mm. Um, it leads to better better connection with your clients as well. With you, you relate yeah. to them more in a personal, and, and I think that's where yeah, like sort of advice is, is shifting. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Gianna, what would you say? What's been the most challenging part of your advice journey? 
Um, yeah, I think it's the, the outsource piece and, um, you know, I do have a, st a staff member and it, um, it, it's, um, it was very nerve-wracking <laughs> for me. Um, obviously costs, you know, everyone grapples about the cost, rising costs of uh, running a, a, a small practice and I get that um, as well. Uh, juggling a family, so personal life and business life <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah, there's, um, I suppose, you know, it's just one big learning piece, I suppose. Um, yeah. I think you mentioned before that it's just that that constant in the ongoing sort of refinement of what you're doing and, like, we work with a business coach like you and that just mm -hmm. keeping that focus, like, why are you doing it? What's that next 1% that you can do and all of those little things that you that you sort yeah. of have to. Um, yeah. yeah. So... And yeah, and leading by example too. Like if I want to, you know, enrich my clients' lives and help them live a life on purpose and that kind of stuff, I need to lead by example. You know, I need to, you know, understand, you know, how, how to enrich my own life and, and that kind of stuff too. And, okay, yeah, it's going to be running a business going to help me build wealth, but what do I want to do with that wealth as well? So um, it's, yeah, leading by example, not getting caught up to, you know, doing 20 meetings a week, which you can easily, easily do. Um, you know, learning to say no and um, as well. So, and I think the clients understand that and appreciate it as well. I know I was fearful of of that personal piece when I was early on in business that I wanted to feel like one of the clients feel like I was always available. But after a while, I I sort of shifted, and people they know that everyone's people at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. um, you know, when urgent things are happening, yeah, you need some urgent support, but. For the most part, you tell people that you're taking three months mat leave or that you're, you know, going on holidays for a couple of weeks or a month, that they understand that. And as long as you've got the right things in place to to make sure that they're getting things that are crucial, then the other things can not be there for that period of time and the world will not end. I think yeah. sometimes it's our mindset that sort of um, dictates that more than what the clients actually yeah. need or, or want as well. Yeah, and the clients who don't respect that and don't respect that you're here and you've got time, probably not the right client. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Very true. What would you say, you? so you've been sort of almost four years in your business. What have been some of the biggest shifts for you? Yeah, well, when I first started, I want to do a, a lot of money coaching as well, right. as well as providing advice. And I was providing money coaching as a standalone service. Um, I kind of canned that because um, you know, the money coaching was very time consuming and not very profitable, to be honest. So I have um, kind of incorporated that into my high, my top tier service, the private wealth program, which is like a 20 grand a year service. So I've kind of in, now included the, the money coaching stuff within that instead of standalone. Um, that's been a, a, a big thing. Um also, when I first started, I wanted to focus on, you know, women um, uh, women and, and, and finance and so forth, but um, I quickly changed to just do, you know, more professionals and um, business owners and senior public servants. So I'm kind of glad I made that shift quite early as well. Yeah, and, um, yeah, focusing on, you know, low client to advisor ratio. So, you know, less clients, high, more high-paying clients. So mm -hmm. I can, you know give that more personal service like I, I attend um, accountant meetings and um, estate planning meetings you know so actually you know, it's not just the products sort of advice for typical yeah. Yeah. So. so the first couple of things that you've mentioned there the um, money coaching as a standalone service and the focus solely on on female mm -hmm. what's there obviously those are quite big shifts in in moving away from them how did you how did you sort of assess that over time? Is that part of the work with your business coach or like what um you know, what were you looking at to lead you to make those decisions? How did you know? Because it's hard I know for me that you get you get an idea and you go, Great, this is like I'm so excited, I'm gonna launch this online course or you know, do this thing. And um it often isn't until for me I found like I got so caught up in I was like doing an online course and writing book and trying to do social media advertising. And I got so distracted with doing that that I just stopped making money. And then I was like, holy shit, what's that? What happened to my bank account? <laughs> yeah. And then I, was like, I was like, wow, I'm pouring like hours and hours into this thing. And it's, it might be a good idea, but it's not the right idea um, at this point in time. 
but I yeah. wish that I had a structured approach to figuring that stuff out at that time because it would have saved me a few bucks on the journey. Yeah. So what does that mean for you? Yeah, so with the money coaching stuff, it was I quickly realized that it wasn't profit making and people weren't really valuing it. They're like, yeah, we want to budget, we want to save and kind of stuff, but it's got like kind of like um trying to lose weight, right? If there's if you don't really want to do it, you're not gonna to stick to the plan. Right. Um, I just got frustrated. I'm like, you know what, I don't really enjoy this anymore. So that was my mind shift and, and incorporating within the private wealth program and, and giving it to clients who, who need it and who want it. Um, yeah. you know, that it was just a bit more, um, yeah, well, that's just been working much better. I mean, not everyone in the private wealth program wanted or need it, so I'll just, I'll just steer away, but it's mm. there for those who need it. And, you know, if they're paying me, you know, that large amount, it's not some money, they're, you know, obviously valuing what I'm doing and being here for a reason. Um, because with the, the money coaching stuff, I was charging like two grand or less about that. Um, and, you know, I had like, I think six or eight meetings and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> so, mm. um, with the women stuff, um, just more, I just, you know, I was attracting, you know, couples and obviously I've got amazing male clients as well. I was like, you know what, this is what I'm really enjoying. I don't really want to steer in the female, um, just focus on females. And plus, you know, there's already amazing financial advisors out there who focus on females and do it really well as well. So um, so that was just a, a natural progression for me. Just, yeah. Nice. Yeah, don't want to discount those blokes. They're, they're good. They're good, you know, from time to time. You get the old <laughs> ones. Yeah, I don't know. Amazing <laughs> amount of clients. So, you know. um, but, yeah, I think it was just, um, yeah, I think especially because I wanted to focus on, you know, an ideal client base and I just, yeah, that should just also a lot of planning opportunities for couples i'd say more than for individuals whether that's a male or a female i'd say that mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a little bit more strategy that that comes into it different tax mm-hmm. rates uh, optimize mm-hmm. you know awesome. strategic considerations so it gives us a few yeah. more things that we can draw on to add value back to the clients as well i found in yeah. my experience yeah. gianna yeah. what are the things and you mentioned a few things that have changed there what are the things that haven't changed for you Oh, that haven't changed to me um, from when I was just a financial planner as an employee to now. Is that what yeah. you mean? In, yeah, in your advice and maybe, maybe more so in the business, like since you started, what are the things that, that have just stayed the same? Um, from day dot, I've always charged for the initial discovery session. Actually, not day dot, from probably from about three months in, I, I was charged yeah. for this session, so $195, I mean, which is quite small for the amount of value mm. I provide. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's hasn't changed because I think going the other way around, I think it'd be worse off because you'll be attracting people who don't know you can value or really mm. aren't interested in financial advice. So that hasn't changed. Um, from day dot, you know, pre COVID, I've always offered either face to face meetings or via Zoom from day dot. And because I did that because I really wanted to create a flexible business, not just for myself, but for my busy clients as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that hasn't changed. <laughs> In fact, that was um, a really good decision. <laughs> Ahead of the curve. <laughs> disruption. Yeah, you know, when COVID hit, it was like, oh, business is usual for me. Clients are used to it already. So, um, yeah, my life to see hasn't changed. Um, I haven't changed life to see since, since I started my business. Um, and going through that live, love, learn, legacy or 10 3 now exercise hasn't changed as well. So I've, I've been doing that from day dot. In fact, I was doing that before I started with FITS. Um, uh, as well so they're probably nice I love, the, I, love, nice. I love the charging at the front end because um i think it sets the tone for for your relationship with with clients as well that you only want to be having conversations with people that it's not about the 195 dollars as you know like it's not like you're ever going to get rich from from running that as a business but just mm-hmm. people that value having a conversation with you enough to commit their time and a, and a few bucks for it, I think is a, is a really good one. Plus if someone's not going to pay $200 for a meeting, they're probably not going to pay $20,000 for, for a financial <laughs> plan. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's like organizing an event, you know, we've, I've organized events, you probably have two and even just charging $10 a head, you know, you get a much better turn up than just offering it completely free. So in, in, my, in my experience, so it's amazing. Definitely. But, um, but yeah, the, the online meetings, um, you know, when I was, at, at a, a, 
first date super, every single meeting at that time had to be in person, even if they were like four hours away. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Why, you know, in my business, I'm like, I need to be flexible for my clients as well as myself and yeah. you know, offering every, every meeting is, is offered either um, by Zoom or in person. And um, yeah, 50% is by Zoom, 50% is in person. And that's the client's choice, not mine. Yeah, we, we've started offering, like we put everything to Zoom when COVID's been going on and since then we've we've been offering people in person if they want to do it, but we found probably still less than 10% of our meetings happen in person, mm-hmm. even though yeah. a lot of our clients are just around the corner, like a lot of them work in, in Sydney CBD when they, you know, when yeah. they are working out of an office. So uh, it's funny, I think that people have become, in Sydney at least, like they've become addicted to that. The, the efficiency that you get from being able to fire up the Zoom and definitely for couples as well, it means that you can have people in different locations super easy. Yeah, so. one at work, one at home. I mean, I still find in the initial discovery session, a clients do generally prefer to be in, in person so they can get a sense of who, my, who I am and I actually prefer that too. Um, mm. But ongoing clients, you know, you know, existing relationships, yeah, meet me by Zoom, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, more often than not, so... Yep. Gianna, if you could go back to you to your yourself on day one of starting your business and and do do one thing differently, what would it be? Uh, probably outsource from day dot instead of trying to do everything myself. I mean, I understand you know day dot because I literally started with a big fat zero, zero clients, zero mm-hmm. revenue, zero money. Um, um, but outsourcing all that stuff, what we call the red stuff, allows you to focus on the the, the blue and black, I suppose, the the actual money generating stuff. So that's pretty mm. fun. So what I've done differently, I'm kind of happy or content with how things have progressed. I mean, there has been change, there have there have been frustrations, um, but no big regrets to be honest of what I would have done differently from day four. I saw I saw Chris Hemsworth getting interviewed off the back of the like the Thor movie uh, recently, and they're like, what they said, what what would you change, or what would you what would you piece of advice you give? He goes, well, he goes, if I change anything, it wouldn't have ended up here. So um, mm. he goes, let's say just keep following the path and don't change anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have to constantly change, but um, no, it's 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 been good. I mean, definitely still growing. I think next steps are to either probably. Well, I'm still trying to work out what the next steps are, to be honest, um, for the business. I'm still in growth phase, so definitely not in maturity phase in the business line. Um, so whether it be hiring a, um, an associate advisor or merging with more of a senior advisor or just focusing on myself and, you know, just focusing on um, you know, the, the smaller, uh, sorry, the, the bigger clients as well. Yeah, tricky. It's there's a lot of different ways to be right with that. And obviously, we're having a bit of a chat before firing it up. You know, running an ultra lean business has a lot of advantages. You get that flexibility, like you say, not a lot of obligation in in terms of the team. Having more team gives you a bit more revenue capacity, um, a bit more time capacity, yeah. allegedly. Um, so, yeah, a lot of different ways to be right. But you've sort of stolen my next question potentially, which is. Um, I was just going to ask, like, what's coming up for you? What's on What's on the radar other than trying to, you know, get sleep and show with those two kids? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm about to open both in my new office. So um, I have a I just built a new house and attached to that house is my new office. So very professional, family oh. office. <laughs> um, so that's happening soon. Um, yeah, you know, broadening the team through more outsourcing as well. So take a bit more um, workload off me because I am still doing stuff that's not really, you know, that, that can be outsourced. Um, updating my website. So I'm currently working with the Fitz marketing team to update my website, which I'm really excited about as well. Um, yeah. So. Geez, nice. Funny, funny, funny happening. Yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> Well, Gianna, thank you so much for sharing your story. Really appreciate it. And as I say, particularly given that you're in the thick of your your maternity leave. But, um, yeah, really uh, exciting times ahead. So look forward to hearing how it goes in the next one. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Ben. Um, Cheers, guys. Thank you.